Greetings and praise the Lord. I'm Evangelist Frieda Morrison, President of the International Pentecostal Young People's Union, and I want to welcome you to the IPYPU 2020 Virtual Commencement. Today, we are going to be honoring graduates from kindergarten to grad school. We have about 250 graduates from the USA, Canada, the Bahamas, Jamaica, Europe, and the Philippines that we're going to be recognizing and honoring today. I know that this has been a very tough year for all of us, but I want you to know that we are so proud of you. You did it. You persevered, you kept the faith, and you crossed the finish line and achieved victory. I know that many of you were looking forward to walking down the aisle to pomp and circumstance and, and listening to your family scream your name as you went to collect your diploma, but please know, in spite of what you may have lost, in, in spite of what you may feel like you may have missed out on, I want you to hold on to and focus on what you have and what you have gained. You are now a graduate, which means you completed everything that was required of you to reach your goal. And since you have reached your goal, that makes you a winner. Class of 2020, I want you to know that you are all winners. You made it, you finished it, and you survived it. And I am so proud of you and I celebrate you today. In the next hour, you will hear from various leaders within the IPYPU, as well as some very special guests like our presiding bishop, Bishop Theodore L. Brooks Sr., former IPYPU president, Elder David Hollis, and very special guest, Kev on stage, who have all come together to celebrate your achievements. So are you ready? Let's go. Praise the Lord, I'm presiding Bishop Theodore Brooks, and I want to send my congratulations to the class of 2020. You all have achieved something incredible in uncertain times, and you should be very proud of your accomplishments. Have you journeyed into the next stage of life, whether it's college, maybe graduate school, or maybe you're just gonna join the workforce? I wanna encourage you, number one, to keep God first. When God is ahead of your life, things will not always be easy, but you will never, never, never be alone. Mother Brooks and I want you to know that we are praying for you as you move forward in life and find your voice and in the next journey that you're going to. We pray your faith stands strong and that you trust God and hold fast. Listen, we love you very much and we are so proud of everything that you've done to overcome these trying circumstances. God bless you, and we love you to life. Praise the Lord, saints. I said praise the Lord, saints. I am kept on stage, and I am grateful and thankful to be able to address the IPYPU International Pentecostal Young People's Union. Many of you may not know that I was once an internationally Pentecostal young person in the union back in the Mountain States Council in El Paso, Texas. We are grateful for famous alumni, Brother John Legend, Kenneth Babyface Edmonds, and Tavis Smiley, Fred Hammond, and Marvin Sapp, myself, Grace and Noel Jones. But I would be remiss if I did not show honor to presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Bishop Theodore Brooks. I would be remiss if I did not show honor to IPYPU Auxiliary Director, Bishop Lance Foster. I would be remiss if I didn't show honor to the first female IPYPU president in our over 85 year history, Evangelist Frida Morrison. I'm thankful that I would be remiss if I didn't show love, honor, and adoration to IPYPU Vice President Pastor Chiron Shorter. Oh, yes! IPYPU Secretary Antoinette Green, the longest serving officer in the history, over 10 years. 
I would be remiss if I didn't show honor to God without whom we would not be here today. I am so proud of the young people, the graduates, all up and through the IPYPU. I am so thankful that an organization with such rich history, my God, oh, P-A-W, I know it well. Such a rich history, the oldest Pentecostal organization in the world with over 1.7 million members worldwide. Come on and bless y'all. Come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Whoa, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm so proud of you, young people graduating in the midst of a pandemic. You know what? God, oh, come on. I hear you, Holy Ghost. God is going to bless you in the midst of it. You see right there when you're in the storm, God is there too. Oh, when they was on the boat and the water was tossing and turning in the midst of the storm, Jesus was there. He told the winds and the waves, peace be still. So even though you're dealing with this in the midst of the storm, God is here. IPYPW, IPYPU, PAW is here. Amen. We're so thankful for you, proud of you. We're godly proud, not worldly. We thank God for you and what he's doing in you and through you and with you. And I would be remiss if I didn't honor you on today. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you at convention.
Grace and peace, everybody. It's your boy, Pastor Kyron Shorter, IPYPU Vice President, uh, sending a heartfelt God bless you to all the IPYPU constituents, and more importantly, to the graduating class of 2020. Um, I certainly want to take a moment to commend you all for this great accomplishment. In the midst of chaotic times, you were still committed to um, finishing and to uh, pursuing your dreams and goals, and that's something to never be uh, forgotten. Um, I believe that this graduating class will probably be one of the most historic in modern history uh, because I believe that this great adversity will produce great exploits. You'll go on to do great things, not just professionally, not just naturally, but you're going to be a great blessing to the body of Christ, the IPYPU, and the entire Pentecostals of the world. And so again, I want to sincerely commend you all, say God bless you all, keep pursuing your dreams, keep uh, uh, aiming for the stars, uh, keep doing everything possible to make your families proud, your respective churches proud. We're excited about what God is doing, and we're believing God for greater things to come. We have myself, my wife, Life, as well as your family here in Los Angeles, the Bethesda Temple Church family, we again want to say God bless you all and congratulations. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Sister Tonia Douglas, your IPYPU Assistant Secretary. Listen, I just wanted to come and say congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. You made it. Uh, you graduated. And regardless if it's from preschool, if it's from high school, um, or even grad school. It's an accomplishment that you and your family should be proud of. Um, never do I think any of us would have imagined we would be here, um, you know, and you may not have been able to do um, your normal graduation ceremony or whatever it is that your institution normally does to celebrate your graduation, but it's an accomplishment nonetheless, and you should be proud um, of all that you've done. So to the graduating class of 2020, I say congratulations again. Uh, keep your head up, stay strong, keep God first. And remember, if he brings you to it, he can bring you through it. God bless. Hello everyone, this is Elder Cameron Adams, the director for the Young Ministers Alliance of the IPYPU. First of all, I would like to say congratulations to each of you on this wonderful accomplishment. You all are the graduating class of 2020. Listen, I know that this has been a very unique time for everyone and especially you because you have now had to achieve greatness even in an unprecedented circumstance such as this pandemic. But friend, I want you to be encouraged to know that if God can bring you through this, he can bring you through anything in your life. Always keep God first. That would be my advice to you. Keep God first in everything that you do and you will always achieve success. My former pastor, Bishop Edward T. Roberts, uh, would always quote these words, Christ in education makes the best combination. And we believe that to be true to this day. Be encouraged, keep God first, and keep climbing. God bless you. Hey, to all the graduates, listen, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on such a remarkable accomplishment during such a difficult time in our society. Listen, it wasn't easy, but you made it work. You stuck with it and you graduated. That's the most, most important part. Even in your future, you're going to face difficulty and you're going to have many, many chances to have opportunities come right there before you and sometimes you won't see the opportunity you won't know how to make it that's a part of life but i leave you with this if opportunity does not knock build a door make it knock for you again congratulations on such a remarkable accomplishment graduating in the year of 2020 you're going to go down in history praise the lord Minister Tyrus Stripling here from the Church of Lord Jesus Christ where my pastor is Pastor Sarah Jones. And I'm so glad to be a part of the IPYPU staff. And I wanna take this time to just congratulate the class of 2020 on a job well done. I wanna let you know that you are smart, you are intelligent, and you are important. I know this year is a bit different that we weren't able to have the full blown graduation festivities that we usually have each year. But guess what? God has it all in control. He knows our ups and he knows our downs. I'm so glad that you made it and you're gonna continue Continue to make it know that we are praying for you and you got this you're gonna do great and wonderful things God bless you congratulations to class of 2020
2020. On behalf of the IPYPG Convention Management, myself, Elder D. Robinson, I want to congratulate you on accomplishing this milestone, whether it be from preschool, middle school, high school, college, a trade, a skill. I just want to say congratulations. You put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the work, and you deserve to be celebrated. So I celebrate you today. I celebrate your accomplishment. Remember, the sky is the limit to what you can have. God bless you. God bless you. And congratulations in Jesus' name. Shout out to the class of 2020. I'm Dr. Brown, and I'm really here just to congratulate you all for making it through unprecedented times. No one can say in recent times that they had to go through their final times of high school or middle school or college, whatever it was that you graduated from during a pandemic. And so I just want to let you guys know that you were built for this and congratulations on this great momentous achievement. In connection with that, I want to just mention something to you that I feel like is a way for you to pay it forward and to be a gift to the world as your global citizens, and that is registering to vote. We know that the election is in the first Tuesday of November, and that is our responsibility to vote. So I encourage all of you to get out and register to vote. If you will be 18 before the general election comes, based on your state, find out what the deadline is for you to register in order to have your voice be heard. Um, I'm a proud person who, in our family, we are all registered to vote um, permanent absentee so that we make sure that everyone is making their voice be heard. We also want you guys to do the same. So you can go online to whenweallvote.org and you can find out based on your state what the process is for you to register to vote. And you can also find out different information that will help you be educated voters as we go into this general election. So again, 2020, make us proud and congratulations. Praise the Lord, Saints. It's your boy Kim on stage, and I want to congratulate everyone, all the graduates here, the IPYPU, young people, young apostolics. I was one of you. Many moons ago, I grew up in the PAW Church, Mountain States Council, under the tutelage of Elder District Clayton Carr, Suffragan Bishop Clayton Carr, to be specific. And as I was thinking about making this video, I realized that the uh, performance abilities that I have now were were nurtured a man in the apostolic church. I remember the, my first memories performing, me and my brother were doing IPYPU services. You know, we would do talent shows, we do skits, we play Bible characters, we write skits. You know, we sang in the junior choir, all them old Hezzy songs, won't he make you clean? Ba -do 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 -do. Inside. You know, I was a, a, a little tenor, a poor tenor. You know, I, I never got to lead no songs. I didn't get to lead never not once, you know, but I got to be a part and I got to play the drums and I learned how to play the drums and I got to play altar call, you know, once we got to altar call, they would let me play. You know, I wasn't, I couldn't keep up enough to play for the main choir, but you know, I was able to play <laughs> altar call and testimony service. And, and even, believe it or not, my first stand up performance was at church. I was at Greater Christ Temple Apostolic Church in Tacoma, Washington. We had an IPYPU talent show and most people sang, danced, did poetry and I did stand-up comedy and that was the first time I ever performed um, my gift. So I'm very grateful to the Apostolic Church, the PAW, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. I'm very fond of it, my grandma church still PAW. So when I go to El Paso, I still attend. And I'm really grateful for the opportunities the church afforded me and for all the support I've had over the years. And I'm here to tell you guys that as you grow, age and change, you know, you're graduating now, which feels like the end. You know, I'm graduating, I'm done with this, you know, but it's really the beginning. And, you know, you're gonna have good days and bad. You know, there's times in my career where I thought something was gonna be amazing and it turned out to be awful. And things I thought were gonna be awful that turned out to be amazing. But the truth of the matter is, without the failures, I would not have the success. It took the mess ups and the mistakes and bombing on stage and, and signing bad contracts and like making bad mistakes. And I'm not saying you have to, but I'm thankful that the ones that I did allowed me to be a better businessman, a better performer, 
You know, the songwriter says, we fall down, but we get up. Cause a saint is just a sinner who fell down. But he didn't say that and got up. So yeah, I, I'm not here in front of you as a perfect person. I'm not here in front of you as a person who hasn't made mistakes. I'm here as a representation of somebody who's sitting right where you were, right where you are even. I mean, we grew up having to go to councils and conventions and I'm so grateful for all those opportunities um, to express my gift. You know, the church, you know, really nurtured my gift and really allowed us to do what we would love to do and, and encouraged us. And I'm here to encourage you to follow your dreams. You know, even if it doesn't seem like that path is there, do what you love however you can. I now basically make a living making YouTube videos and Instagram videos that make people laugh. But that started off after church, making people laugh in the parking lot. And, you know, after Sunday night service, watching Star Search, eating pie, and, and recreating Sister Daniel shouting and falling over the do this in remembrance of me in front of the offering table. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I'm basically doing the same thing now that I did, you know, 30, 30, 30 years ago when I was five years old in the PAW, you know, when I was 16 doing stand up comedy um, at the talent show. And I'm grateful. You know, without that opportunity, I don't think I ever would have been able to do this. You know, it's it's growing up in the church, one, and then being able to express, cultivate, and, and share my gift in the church. And and maybe your gift, you know, is computer coding, and maybe your gift is, is whatever it is. You know, maybe it's not something that can be done in the church, but I'm sure there's people sitting next to you, front of you, behind you, that will support you as you grow. So I love you, I'm proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation. May you have all the success in the world as you continue. Amen, amen, amen.
grace and peace to Bishop Theodore Brooks and Lady Janice Brooks, to Bishop Mark Talbert and Lady Emilda Talbert, to Bishop Michael Hanna and Lady Jeanette Hanna, to the Executive Bishops Council, to the Board of Bishops, to the International Pentecostal Young People's Union Auxiliary, to its president, who is the first female president, Evangelist Frida Morrison and her husband, to her assistant, Pastor Kyron Shorter and his wife, to the auxiliary director, Bishop Lance Foster, and most of all, to the class of 2020, I say congratulations and praise the Lord. Isn't it unique that after 13 years of study, kindergarten through the 12th grade, you have what is called commencement. By definition, the, the word commencement means to start or to begin. But it is always placed at the end of a 13-year study period. Why? Because you're embarking on a new era, a new stage of life. We have a tendency to say that hindsight is 2020. Well, your 2020 is current, it's present, it is in your face. But you are just like generations before you who at the end of a 13 year period are thrust into some challenging times. For some of you, your parents were thrust into the Gulf War in 1991, right after graduation. Maybe your grandparents were thrust into the Vietnam War between 1962 and 1973. Maybe your great-grandparents were thrust into the Korean War in 1950, 1953, and or World War II in 1941 to 1945. But each generation was called on to address the evils of its time. Each generation was called to fight using new weaponry to defeat ancient ideologies. Each generation was called to resist cruelty and injustice, just like you. You are their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. Some of their wars were 11-year wars. Some of their wars were four-year wars. Some of their wars were three-year wars. Some of their wars were one-year wars. This event that you're if, if, uh, facing right now are, is only about six months in, and yet it seems to be tedious, it seems to be tumultuous, it seems to be larger than life. But I do want to share with you, for you not to be soon shaken, by the events of your generation. Though the war seemingly is new, how we fight is not new. Though the war that we wrestle is not simply flesh and blood, our war definitely is of the mind. Their battleground were seashores, their battleground was the jungle, their battleground was desert sand. Your battleground is your mind. The fight is for your mind, mentally, the seat of your affections. Peter writes to us in a letter to the church, and he says that there's a lust that wars against the soul. It must be your responsibility you must prioritize today's actions because they affect your future. My grandmother used to say it this way. She used to say, salvation, education, occupation. I'll repeat it. Salvation, education, occupation. She used to teach us, get God, get your lesson, 
and get a good job. I want to share with you the life of a gentleman that we know in the scriptures by the name of Peter. He's also called Simon. He's referred to as Cephas. He's called son of Jonas. He's a young entrepreneur. He's married. He owns a home. He will be chosen by Jesus Christ. He is elected. When he's chosen, he has some great accomplishments already. He is a fisher of fish. But Jesus says that he's going to teach him a new skill set, how to become fishers of men. When you look at this gentleman named Peter, Simon, Cephas, when you hear each name that he's referred to as, it's denoting and detecting a period in his life or a moment in his life where he is now called the hearer, he's called the rock, he's referred to as stone. It is this gentleman also, Peter, that you see that whenever he's listed, he has pressure because he's listed as number one on the list. Matthew chapter 10, he's mentioned first in the list. Mark chapter 3, he's mentioned first in the list. Luke chapter 6, he's mentioned first in the list. Acts chapter 1, he's mentioned first in the list. Here's a gentleman at a young age that carries a lot of pressure and is an influencer. But when people mention him, most people think of some of the not so happy experiences of his life. He's called the guy who stepped out the boat but began to sink. He's known as the guy who denied the Lord Jesus. He's referred to as the guy who cursed when pressured by a little girl. He's the guy that assaulted. This man gets an assault charge when he cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. He's the guy that after the death burial of Jesus Christ, he goes back fishing and his influence is so great that all of his friends go back fishing with him. He's the guy that ran to the empty tomb. He's also the guy that later would be given the keys to the kingdom. What we see about this gentleman in the Gospels as compared to him writing to the church in 1 Peter about 30 plus years later it's a different gentleman. He's got the same name, but after experiencing some things in life, after walking with the Lord, after seeing visions and revelations, after using the gospel and the key of knowledge to unlock the doors to the saints, he takes the time to pin to them to the saints that are scattered abroad. He writes to them and he says, now I understand that you are experiencing a season of suffering. He says, I understand that where you are, you're experiencing manifold temptation. He uses the term fiery trials. He uses the word reproached and suffering for righteousness sake. To this group, he writes and says, but with all of your suffering, with all of your experiences of sadness and pressure, he says, gird up. Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. My desire is for you, this class of 2020, as you embark on new eras and stages of life, gird up your mind. Be sober, be calm in your thinking. Don't be erratic. Don't make decisions off the cuff. Don't make decisions off of anxiety and panic, but gird up the loins of your mind. Run this race 
but you've got to run it with any inhibitions of tripping and falling, snagging yourself. Pull your mind up out the gutter. Pull your mind up out of depression. Pull your thoughts, bring your thoughts into the obedience and the captivity of Christ. Oh, class of 2020, this is going to be a wonderful time for you. It's a time you will. You will experience some things in life that might not be favorable. You will experience the loss of friends. You will experience the loss of tangible things. You might even experience the loss of a job. But Peter writes and says, during these suffering times, gird up, get yourself together, pull it in, fashion your thinking, set your affection, focus your, uh, your affections, your thinking on things above. Peter writes and says, get faith. And then once you get the faith, once you get faith, add to your faith virtue. Add to your virtue knowledge. Add to your knowledge temperance. Add to your temperance patience. Add to your patience godliness. Add to your godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness add charity. Peter writes, and Peter says, if these things be in you and abound, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. But if you lack these things, he that lacketh these things is blind and he can't see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. I say to the class of 2022, Experience is not always the best teacher. Some say, oh, I wish they would just leave me alone and let me experience some things by myself. Well, the challenge with experience is that it is not always the best teacher, but it is an expensive teacher. It will cost you something to experience some things. You should be willing to be an observant learner. Learn from observation. Everything you don't have to experience. You can learn from others. You can learn from your past. You can learn from those around you. Here we are, 2020. I must tell you that when I was growing up, 2020 seemed miles and eons, light years away. I graduated in 1989. I remember thinking, Wow, I have a long time before 2000. 2000 came quick. Before I knew it, 2001 was here. 2005 came suddenly. 2010 came immediately. Here we are, 10 years from 2010, 2020. It's been several years since I walked across the stage carrying my diploma, taking my tassel and moving it to the other side of my graduating hat. I say to you, and I encourage you, gird up, fashion yourself, set your affections on things above. Your 2020 is not hindsight. Your 2020 must be current and it must be ahead of you. Lastly, the Apostle Peter writes and says, live in great expectation, for you have a lively hope. You are lively stones set on the building. You live with El peace, live with hope. He uses the term Zoe. You have life with expectation. Each generation had to face its troubles, but they saw beyond the trouble because they were living with expectation of the fulfillment of the promises of Christ. You are no different. Even in this generation, we're told to look up for our redemption draws nigh. I hope and I pray 
that in this time of suffering, in this challenging period of your life, that you'll keep living. Live with expectation of God who keeps his promise. Live with expectation that you are a chosen generation and you are a royal priesthood. I pray today that something has been said that your pure mind would be stirred, that you will not forget who you are, whose you are, and what you've been called to do. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Grace and peace, everybody. It's your boy, Pastor Kyron Shorter, IPYP Vice President and Director of the IPYP Alumni Association. Extending another heartfelt God bless you and congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We certainly thank God for all that you have accomplished given all this particular climate as well as all the great things that you're going to do for the glory of God. Since our inception in 2019, the Alumni Association uh, serves as a vehicle of the IPYPU to champion the scholarship of our young people. Those of you who endeavor to do great things educationally, we want you to know we got you and we're here to support you. And that's where I need the help of all of my other IPYPU alumni, all of us who grew up in this thing, who have been blessed by the rich ministry of the IPYPU down through the years, to do me a favor and to sow a seed that we may help uh, grow our scholarship fund to be able to bless these deserving young people all throughout uh, our uh, uh, IPYPU constituency. You can do that right now by going out to Cash App, dollar sign IPYPU, in the memo section for the Alumni Association, and let's let the let's just stack money, y'all. Let's just let's fund this thing so that we can provide great opportunities for our young people uh, to be able to have the resources necessary to pursue their dreams and goals. I certainly hope and pray that those of you that have been blessed by IPYPU down through the years will pay it forward. Our young people are doing great things educationally, and our goal is to make sure that they have all the resources necessary to pursue those great things for God. So once again, go out to Cash App, PayPal. You can send something to our corporate headquarters. For those of you that are interested in our scholarships that we have in the name of some of our notable alumni of the IPYPU, you can send us a note at IPYPUinfo at gmail.com. Uh, do us a favor. Let's get involved. Let's get engaged. And let's make sure that this graduating class and the future graduating classes of the IPYPU know that there are some tangible resources for them to get to the next level in life and to pursue the great thing they desire to do uh, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We love you, congratulations, and we salute you in Jesus' name.